I had a ton of messes. My wife was the biggest thing that gave me strength to overcome it. So we say that your relationship is actually your biggest and the best mastermind you can ever have. Now I'm in Russell's inner circle. I invest every single year because those people get us to have a different style, mindset, something new that we're always coming up with, just like Russell shared earlier. Yet the best mastermind you can ever have is between husband and wife. There's only two reasons really why people are going to buy from you. They either like you, A, or they want to be like you, B. But B is what the majority of people out there are doing. They're showing all the things that make people want to be like you, which is what I struggled with for a very long time. Why would anyone want to buy from me if they knew that I had struggles in the past, if they knew that I didn't like meeting new people, if they knew that I grew up in a poor home, if they knew that I grew up with a, with a dad and faulty relationships? And then this one moment shifted everything forever for me. If you see this picture up here, it's a picture of my father. And though you know, my family uh, went through some struggles. My dad and I, he was my greatest mentor. And I think this says it all, that when I wanted to be a professional motocross racer, this is him holding my bike up, one, because I couldn't physically reach the ground. Obviously, you can see I'm not that tall in stature anyway. But at this point, I couldn't even touch the ground on this motorcycle. And that's really how my dad and I's relationship was. And I got invited to an event to teach, again, in front of 40 people. And I decided I was going to do something different, that I wasn't just going to hold back my store anymore. And I started sharing my overcoming story. Not just that I was overweight, but why did I become overweight? Why did I struggle so hard in the three core dimensions that we teach our guys? And I told them this story. I remember waking up one day when I was 12 years old, still like it was yesterday, and I was walking out of my bedroom and I saw my dad walking down the hall. And I followed him down into the garage and there's three steps just like this into our garage that then led to an outside area. And I remember looking at my dad and thinking, if I could just get his approval, everything would be good. That if he would just believe in me, I would constantly just think of my father when I would do activities and think, what, is this making him proud? One day I will make him proud, and when he loves and accepts me, that's when I'll know I made it. I thought, this is my opportunity. This is the chance. I went up to my dad and I said, Dad, you know what? I'm gonna be the best motocross racer in the world. We're going to get a tutor. We're going to go on the road. I'm going to give everything to this. And I thought this was going to be the time he's going to accept me. He turned around. He looked at me. And I shared this story in front of 40 people. And he told me, Nicholas, you'll never be the best. And I remember it crushed me so deeply inside that that moment that switched my life forever for the negative, that was that moment. I remember gaining 60 pounds, graduating the 1.8 GPA, not having any friends throughout high school, suicidal thoughts being self-conscious, all because of that one moment. And when I shared that story in front of 40 people, I couldn't even get through my teaching. I cried and I wailed through the entire thing. I left that and thought I was a total failure. But what was the truth? The truth is the quickest way for people to know, like, and trust you is to share your story. I had never generated more than $3,000 in a month, and I had no reason to make money at that event because I didn't even get to the teaching points. I was freaking crying the whole time. I left that event and I saw that we had made $22,000 that month without selling anything, and still to this day, this event and community that has grown to thousands of people still talk about that one moment that shifted everything for that community, that made everyone connect together, and they say it's that one spot where everything changed. When you share your story, everything changes. When most people look at problems, it's kind of like water. When you have water, you either grow up with drinking water and you can drink water without thinking about it, but there's people in the world that still don't have water. And there's something that had to be figured out. If you don't have any water, you're gonna go into scarcity mode. In scarcity mode, you got two choices. You either gotta go find a spring or dig a well. One of two things. And most people that don't come to events like this, they think, well, hopefully someone comes and digs a well for me because obviously this isn't working, I don't have enough water. And the second type of person will go out there and they're like, I need to dig a well and I need to go find spring water, something. So they go out there and they solve that problem and they're like, never again am I ever gonna tell people that I lived without water. That story I'm not gonna share because I'm fine now. But then there's other people like us in this room and the reason why I like coming to events like this is the people that do it differently. People that look at failure and opposition as opportunity. 
People that will go out there and see, I don't have water. I'm struggling in an area. I need to dig a well or I need to go build a, or find a spring and already looking at the people out there that if we can solve this problem, overcome something, then guess what you can do? You can go out there and show other people how to solve this same problem where you can truly go out there and take something that you struggled with to take something that was your biggest opposition and create it and turn it into an opportunity, not just for you, but for someone else. You guys down for that? Yes? <laughs> Making sure you're still awake with me. <laughs> My biggest fear is that if people truly knew who I was, they would reject me. I know that we all have those thoughts. What are those things that we don't share with people? What are those things that we don't share with the community? What are those things that we hold back from people? Because we think if they truly knew who we were or what we went through, that they would reject us. I remember this was the core belief that held me back. I thought that if I could rip up every picture, become fit, become rich, have a great relationship, then what would happen is that all of a sudden, I would disconnect from that person that I used to be. I hated this person on the left so much because it was a representation of, a representation of everything that I wasn't. But what I actually found is that that fear to share that story actually showed that that moment still had power over me. That it not only was gonna set other people free, but me sharing my story was gonna set me free. That I was the person that was holding myself back. And, it, and inside, your biggest fear will always come before your biggest breakthrough. That biggest opposition will always try to keep you back. I remember going to the gym, Every time I go to the gym, I don't want to go. But after I go, all of a sudden, I feel so much better afterwards. And I remember being inside of one of our communities, only 40 men in our BDB elite, and I know some of them are here. And I remember opening it up and finding this hidden gem, this one truth. I said, guys, I want you to share one thing about yourself to this community that no one else knows. I thought they were going to say something like, I stole the eraser from my first grade teacher. I thought it was going to be stupid stuff. But I remember the first person went up there and set the stage, became the example just like you guys are. He said, I was molested growing up. And I remember my jaw dropping thinking, man, first off, I feel more connected to him tell telling me the truth than I did beforehand. The very thing, after some of them telling us they were hooked on heroin, some of them saying they were in jail, and they never told anyone their story because they were afraid that everyone was gonna reject them, was the very thing that made us know, like, and trust them. There was one story that I used to listen to all the time when I was 12 years old. I remember at this point, my parents had broken up when I was four. I wrote my first suicide letter when I was seven. I remember having that one detrimental moment happen with my father, and I remember sitting in my room with my dad gone. I didn't talk to him for three and a half years. My mom left for work every single day. I got dropped off at school at 6 a.m. and picked up at 6 p.m. every single day. I was put in daycare from zero to two, and I was put in preschool from two to four. If there was anyone who was, uh, was afraid of being left and rejected, it was me. The number one most self-conscious person I've ever worked with in my life was me, and I'm so glad for that moment. But I remember being 12, and there was one person that inspired me, someone who had failed ninth grade three times, someone who dropped out of school at 17 years old and made something of himself, someone who went out there and chose who would throw up before he would ever come out on stage, that was afraid to be in just in front of a handful of people, that was beat up and once was in a coma, someone who would sit there and inspire me. And I remember him just dreaming to be like him. He says, if anyone's ever been through things in their life and they sit and they cry at night, wishing they die till they throw on a rap record and they sit and they vibe with nothing to do because we're the freaking stuff in their eyes. And I remember singing that song and just feeling like this is the thing that's keeping me alive right now. And when you truly disconnect from the things in your life that are holding your back, that you're afraid that other people are going to reject you, that other people are going to see you differently, that you don't see the point of sharing your story, that when you go out there just as this guy did, he stepped up on a stage. You guys know him as Eminem. He stepped up on a stage at the end of 8 Mile, and he decided that he was done with trying to put on a facade. He decided to share every single thing that people could use against him. And when he shared the things that he was afraid of, it took all the ammunition out of every single other person's hands because they had nothing they could use against him. 
and he launched a career and platform on the very thing that he was afraid of. He started telling the truth and telling his story. And I'm telling you that if you can drop all the baggage and commit with me here today to have that one moment that your, that your past can truly become your greatest platform.